Hi guys, so we're back with another webinar. Today we'll discuss table analysis questions. Um, in the last three weeks, we have seen the other three type of IR type of data insights questions. Now, table analysis is actually one of the simplest IR type of data insights question. Yeah. Uh, in case you are comfortable with your number properties and with percentages, that mostly your table uh, analysis should not be a problem. Um, it is one of the question types in which you could need to use the calculator. So then do keep the, uh, that you have, you know, keep in mind that you have that facility available uh, to you. And um, otherwise, the questions don't really pose a lot of problem. You would likely have about two or three questions. You know, you'll have one set, so one table given to you and um, two or three questions based on that. You know, these are normally more sure shot. So that is why uh, ensure that you practice them well. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now, uh, today we're going to discuss a couple of sets from uh, our content. And uh, these are sets that I thought require a discussion. They are perhaps not, you know, that simple. I thought there was a, a slight trick to them. So then the again, the intent as has been for all these kind of questions, all our data insights questions that we've, dis that we've discussed till now, uh, is that I would like to talk about the thought process, right? How to put the data together, what to think about, what to focus on at what point. Of course, as I said, the answer already there in your content, so you don't have to worry about that. But how do you approach the questions? A big issue that we have with data insights is the timing, isn't it? We all feel that we fall short of it. Then, you know, how to use minimum time to arrive at the answer. So my intent would be to tell you the thought process that you should have, what should trigger what, what you know you should think of when you read something. Yeah, all right. Uh, now, before I forget, let me also tell you that uh, I have been coming across some really interesting two-part analysis questions and next uh, week we'll most likely take those. So ensure that you go through the conditionals chapter very well for that. Yeah, then um, we'll have fun uh, in the next week uh, with, those questions, uh, with those questions. Okay, so then let me share my screen and let's start our today's session. All right, so, uh, right. So there is, this is one of the questions that we are going to discuss today. <clears throat> Slightly tricky. So what we'll do is we'll first go through the question together, all of us, and then I'll give you the, I mean, we'll go through the question stem together. We'll go through the data, the table together. And then I'll tell you, um, you know, the question, and then you will, I'll give you a couple of minutes to solve the question. All right. What does the question say? In a survey of N people, so we don't know how many people were surveyed. They were asked to rank five beverages. What are the five beverages they were asked to rank? Yeah, uh, milk, tea, coffee, lemonade, and Red Bull in their order of preference from first to fifth. So from most preferred to least preferred, they were asked to rank all of them. Yeah? They were not supposed to just you know, give the one that they like the most or something. So essentially, let me just move this one up first. Barely have me write this piece again. Yeah. <clears throat> so essentially, like if I uh, were one of the people participating, I would probably say, okay, first, you know, milk, and then second, say tea, and third, say coffee, and then fourth, say lemonade, and then fifth, say Red Bull. Right? So I would give a sequence to all the beverages. It's not just the most preferred or the least preferred. I have to rank all of them. Okay, all N people responded. So everyone did and ranked every beverage and no two beverages were ranked equally by any of the people surveyed. What does this mean and why is this given? Essentially, they are saying that everyone gave you a list like this. First of all, everyone responded. And it's not like that, you know, they ranked, let's say they said, okay, tea and coffee are equal to me and nothing like that, right? Everyone gave you a list. There were no two beverages ranked um, on the same spot by anybody. Okay. Uh, now, each entry in the table represents the number of people who ranked the beverage in the column higher than the beverage in the row. So what does that mean? For example, five people ranked milk higher than tea, eight people ranked milk higher than coffee, etc. So look, what the table gives us is in the, you know, there are rows, milk, tea, coffee, lemonade, Red Bull, and then columns also milk, tea, coffee, lemonade, Red Bull. 
So essentially the data has been given to us in the form where they say that the column, whatever is there at the column, that was ranked higher than what is there um, you know, in the row. So milk and milk, of course, there's no ranking is the same. So that is why no rank has been, nothing has been given, given here. Milk and tea. So this is telling me that five people, because the data in the table is telling me how many people, five people ranked milk higher than tea. So five people ranked milk higher than, than tea. Whatever is in the column is the one which is ranked higher. So look at that. I have also ranked milk higher than tea, right? So I would be one of these five people. For example, in case you were ranking and you rank them something like this, then you would also be one of these five people because you have also ranked milk higher than tea, right? It doesn't have to be right above tea. It just has to be somewhere above tea, right? Ranked higher than. Then of course, then milk was ranked higher than coffee by eight people. Milk was ranked higher than lemonade for, by seven people, et cetera. So, this is what the table tells us. This is what, you know, how we have to read it is. So I have to first understand what the table is giving me exactly, right? How the data is given. So how I have to read it is that coffee was ranked. I'll start with my column. You know, to make it easy, I'll quickly form a process. My process is that I'll say, okay, coffee was ranked higher than milk by seven people. Then tea was ranked higher than coffee by six people. Then tea was ranked higher than lemonade by 10 people. I'll start with my column. I'll say this one is ranked higher than that one by these many people. Yeah, this is how I'm going to look at my data. Okay, uh, do we understand the table? Do we understand what is given to us in the table? Yeah, okay, so now let me uh, show you the question. I'll give you a minute to try it out on your own first. So um, let me discuss it um, because it's, you know, it's a very quick question in case it strikes you, it's very quick. Otherwise we could struggle with it. So, so you know, when I read the value of N is, so of course, then I go back and I'm looking at the question saying, well, there is no data given to me about N, right? I'm just given that there are N people and nothing else is given to me. Absolutely no other figure, nothing that will tell me what N could possibly be in the question stem. All right, which means, but you know, I, I have to find the data. I have to find the answer. Most likely I should be getting it, even though one of the options is cannot be determined, but you know, I should be getting the answer. So then I'm going to my table and what I'll say is, okay, so, you know, milk was preferred over tea by five people. But then think about it. You know, some people preferred, do you remember that we did in combinatorics where we say, that uh, there is a symmetry to things, right? So we said that, okay, if A appears before B in certain cases, then A will appear after B in equal number of cases as well, right? It, let's say when we were arranging and we said, okay, in how many cases, let's say there are five people, we arranged them, we said five factorial, and then how many ways is A before B? Could be anywhere before, right? We said that will be five factorial upon two, why? Because in half the cases, A will be before B and in the other half cases, A will be after B. So when I was making this question set, there was a similar thought process going on that, all right, if there are five people who prefer milk over tea, then the other people, whoever are the remaining people, they will prefer tea over milk. There is no other option. Of course, we can't have them placed equally, right? If five people like milk more than tea, what about the leftover people? They obviously like tea more than milk. So then I go to my T column and I say, okay, T, 10 people like tea more than milk. Now, does it make sense then that there are 15 people? Five people like milk more than tea. The other 10 people like tea more than milk. Will there be anybody else? Is there going to be anyone else? Any person who is going to participate in the survey, what are they going to write? They're either going to put milk on top and tea below somewhere, or they're going to put tea above and milk below somewhere. There is no other way. They can't put them equal in any case, right? And that is the reason why the two numbers, the two figures together is, are going to give us 10, the total number of people. That is N. Now, this is going to hold true for every uh, entry. Look, if I say that 
eight people like milk more than coffee? How many people like coffee more than milk? Seven. So eight plus seven, of course, again, 15. Have to be 15, right? There are 15 people only. Then look at this. Seven people like milk more than lemonade. How many people like lemonade more than milk? Eight. Of course, this has to be 15. So do we see that these pairs will always end up to be 15, right? So our answer over here is going to be 15. The number of people is going to be 15. Okay, so now I'm given seven people prefer both milk and coffee to Red Bull. The number of people who prefer Red Bull to both milk and coffee is. Okay, um, this, you know, it's, it's a little confusing, right? I really don't know what to do, how to start. But all I have is the table to help me out. One thing I know is that there must be 15 total people, all right? <clears throat> And other than that, I just have the table. So, all right. You know, I'm talking about people who prefer milk to Red Bull. Now, milk to Red Bull, eight people prefer that. I'm saying milk to Red Bull. So, where I'm saying, okay, this is preferred over this. There are eight people. And I'm talking about people who prefer coffee to Red Bull. So, if I say, you know, and as we discussed before, I'm going to start from the column, right? So, that there is no confusion. So if I say coffee to Red Bull, I see that there are 10 people here. So I will write it down like this and I'll say there are 10 people. As we have discussed, you should have your own symbolism, something that you, know, you are going to use during the exam, right? You can't be writing everything down. You can't say milk preferred over Red Bull, right? So of course, there has to be some of your own symbolism that you develop, which you find comfortable. Okay. <clears throat> so now I know that Milk is preferred over Red Bull by eight people and coffee is preferred, you know, uh, uh, over Red Bull by 10 people. And I also know that seven people prefer both milk and coffee over Red Bull. Does this remind you of something then? Look, so it reminds me of a set, right? I say, there are eight people lying in set A, there are 10 people lying in set B, and there are seven people who are lying in both set A and set B. It is the same situation. So milk preferred over Red Bull, this is my entire set A, let's say. I say milk preferred over Red Bull. These are eight people. Then there are some people who prefer coffee over Red Bull. Now, you know, the ones who prefer coffee over Red Bull, they, they, there's going to be some overlap with milk over Red Bull also, most likely. There'll be some people in that, in the coffee over Red Bull uh, circle, who will also have milk over Red Bull, right? Let's say Red Bull is placed at the end, then both milk and coffee are going to be above it. So I would say, okay, then this would be the C over R circle. And here I have 10 people. And then this overlap information is given to me because I know that these seven people are the ones who prefer both milk and coffee over Red Bull. So it is a combination of milk over Red Bull as well as, well as coffee over Red Bull. So then I have a Venn diagram over here, right? If there are eight total in this circle, there is only one person in this only M over R circle. And there are three people in this coffee over R circle. So then what can I say about these 11 people? One here, seven here, and three here. What can I say about these 11 people? I can say that, you know, these 11 people, so they prefer at least one milk or coffee over Red Bull, right? So either, you know, some of them prefer only milk over Red Bull, some of them prefer coffee over Red Bull, and some of them prefer both over Red Bull. So these are 11 people. Now, what about the other four people? I know that there are totally 15 people, right? So what about the other four people? They do not prefer milk over Red Bull and they do not prefer coffee over Red Bull, right? So then that means that they prefer Red Bull over both milk and coffee. That is my and neither over here. Do we understand this, right? They are the people who are lying in the neither part of it. If this is my universal set, which has the 15 people, then they are the ones lying at neither. They are my four. The four people who are not lying in any of these regions. So then 
the number of people who prefer red bull to both milk and coffee must be 4 and my answer must be 